We've all been there. You've managed to get through the interview with some senior engineers answering all their barrage of questions to your best of your abilities. Then the interviewer turns around to you and says, do you have any questions for us? Suddenly your mind goes blank and you stare at the interviewer and you just say, no, I think you answered all my questions, thank you. The problem is not having any questions for the interviewer will often make you seem uninterested. And more importantly, you miss out on the opportunity to find out what the company's really like. It is your responsibility to interview the company as much as it is for them to interview you. So before you go for that next interview, watch this video so you know which questions to ask. The first is, what is the structure of the team? This is a great question to ask as it shows that you're interested in the role and it implies that you're trying to imagine what it would be like to work in that team. It also gives you a chance to work out what the ratio is between junior and senior developers. Are there going to be other people with more experience than you that you can learn from? The size of the team is important as well. I personally prefer working in smaller teams, but it really is a personal preference. Number two, why are you hiring for this position? This is a really good question, but you might not get an honest answer. It could be that they're just trying to expand the team, or they might be trying to fill a vacancy for someone that's left or is leaving. If you can get an honest answer to this question, that it can give you some good insights into what it might be like to work for that company. Number three, what does your tech stack look like? When you're applying for a job, there's usually some details about the tech stack on the job's description, but it's always better to ask the engineers that are actually working there to see what technologies they are using. This is your opportunity to work out whether the company is as cutting edge as they say they are, or whether you will be mostly working on legacy applications. Talking about legacy applications, you can just ask outright. So number four is how much of the job is working on legacy applications? I personally think the best way to progress as a software developer is to be on the ground level building out new applications. That way you get to learn new technologies as well as how to design software. However, if most of the time you're just making small changes to a legacy application, then you're not going to get to learn these skills or use any of the new technologies. If their systems are made up of mostly legacy applications, then it's worth asking whether there are plans to upgrade them or migrate them to a new platform. Number five, how many regular meetings do software engineers have to attend? Software development generally requires large blocks of uninterrupted time so that you can concentrate and get in the zone. Of course, it's hard to do that if you're constantly being interrupted by meetings. If you like me and you like a fairly clear calendar, then it's worth asking what meetings are scheduled each week so you can get an idea of how much time you're actually gonna to have to do your work. Even better, some companies do offer a whole day without any meetings, such as a meeting-free Wednesday. This can be great so you can actually focus on your work, but it's worth asking whether the company actually sticks to it, as sometimes people just see a big blank day in their calendar and book in meetings anyway. Number six is why do you like working here? It's good to find out from a developer why they like working for a particular company. It could be that everyone gets on really well, the company has a good culture, and they're open to suggestions from developers. However, if the best they can think of is the free snacks and drink, then this might be a bit of a red flag. Number seven, what training does the company offer? Many companies give their developers free access to Udemy and Pluralsight, which can really help in you learning all the different concepts that you need to know. The top companies also have a generous learning budget that you can use for either taking additional courses, for certifications, or for visiting tech conferences. Number eight, how often do you do a release? Finding out how often a team releases to production can be a great indicator of how good their testing frameworks are. Teams that release every day or multiple times a day generally have a lot of automated tests. At the very least, you would expect a company to release at least once per sprint if they're using Scrum. Unless they're a big company like Apple or Microsoft that are known for doing big releases, infrequent deployments is generally a sign that there's a lot of manual testing going on or there's a lot of red tape that they need to get through to be able to get something into production. Number nine, how do you deal with tech debt? Tech debt is inevitable in most places, but what's important is how teams deal with it and whether the company actually gives them time to address it. It's a good sign if teams have a regular meeting to discuss tech debt and prioritize it in their sprint so it could be worked on. If a team has a lot of tech debt but no time to address it, then this is often a sign that the team is under a lot of tight deadlines, which isn't necessarily an environment that you'd want to work in. Finally, you want to ask, what is the team's biggest challenge? This gives you the opportunity to dig a bit deeper and try and find out what it's actually actually something you'd be interested in doing. Maybe they're splitting up a monolith and they're trying to turn it into microservices, or they're trying to move to a new tech stack. Hopefully they'll be honest and there's interesting things that you're actually excited about working on. Obviously, they're unlikely to say that their biggest challenge is that the company sucks and everyone is leaving, but hopefully you'll get some good insights by asking this question. 
These are the questions that I would ask, but it really depends on what's important to you. Are you interested in doing hackathons? Then why not ask whether the company does them or is interested in doing them? Maybe there's a particular technology that you like using and you want to know whether they use it too. Make sure you ask, even if you don't use it, it shows that you're knowledgeable and you have a passion about what you do. Beyond having the right skills, employers are generally looking for passionate, interesting people who are going to bring something new to the team. Asking questions at the end of an interview is your chance to show that you're interested in the job. If you have any good questions that you always ask at an interview, please add them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what they are. Thank you for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.